come back on. It took about three days. I'm so glad I have a lot to catch up on. I've got a lot of comments that I would like to respond to. Work I need to catch up on because I got behind because I couldn't upload my work and stuff like that. So anyway, it's back up. That makes me happy. Boy, you feel really disconnected when your internet's out, don't you? I, it's not fun. Okay, so I have had several requests for different um, comedians and different routines, and I have started a long list, like I've already said. I, I had to stop writing it down. I had to start adding it to like my a little uh, file uh, because so many that I that I've been um, that have been suggested to me, and of course. George Carlin stuff has been suggested to me multiple times. I am already familiar with George Carlin and some of his routines. So he's not completely new to me. I am aware of his uh, very harsh take on things, or, you know, it might seem harsh to people who are easily offended by stuff like that. Um, he, he was a man who was very much aware of all the ridiculousness going on in society and with government. And I love that about him. A routine that was suggested to me was called Little Things We Have in Common. I don't think I've seen this one before. It's been a good while since I've watched anything of Carlin's and, and whatever I watched at the time was something I had already seen. Like I've, I've, I think something I watched a year or more ago was the little routine he did about stuff. And um, that one was always kind of funny to me. But anyway, so I'm going to check this one out. Like I said, I don't think I've seen it before. Oh, shoot. I forgot to turn my fan off. Dang it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right into this one. And we'll see what it's like. Now, to balance the scale, I'd like to talk about some things that bring us together. Things that point out our similarities instead of our differences. Because that's all you ever hear about in this country right. is our differences. Right. That's all the media and the politicians are ever talking about, the Still things happening. that separate us, things that make us different from one another. That that's the way the rating? ruling class operates in any society. Yeah. They try to divide the rest of the people. They keep the lower and the middle classes fighting with each other so that they, the rich, can run off with all the fucking money. <laughs> Fairly simple thing happens to work. You know, anything different, that's what they're going to talk about. Race, religion, ethnic and national background, jobs, income, education, social status, sexuality, anything you can do, keep us fighting with each other so that they can keep going to the bank. You know how I describe the economic and social classes in this country? The upper class keeps all of the money, pays none of the taxes. The middle class pays all of the taxes, does all of the work. The poor... Okay, so hold on, I will correct him about that. The upper class actually does pay a crap ton of taxes, you guys. Like the top 10% in this country anyway, pay like 70% of federal income taxes. So they do pay a lot. I get his point, but it's it's a common misconception that that uh, the upper class people don't really pay anything at all. And the reality is that they, they do carry the bulk of it. Anyway, so, okay. But his point is still valid. Let's go ahead and continue. <laughs> Or there just to scare the shit out of the middle class. <laughs> Keep them showing up at those jobs. So, so stirring up the shit is something I like to do from time to time, but I also like to know that I can come back to these little things we have in common, little universal moments that we share separately, the things that make us the same. They're so small we hardly ever talk about them. Did you ever look at your watch? And then you don't know what time it is. <laughs> and you have to look again. And you still don't know the time. So you look a third time and somebody says, what time is it? You say, I don't know. <laughs> Do you ever notice how sometimes all day Wednesday, you keep thinking it's Thursday. <laughs> and it happens over and over all day long. Yeah. And then the next day, you're all right again. Do you ever find yourself standing in one of the rooms in your house and you can't remember why you went in there? <laughs> and two words float across your mind, Alzheimer's disease. <laughs> 
You ever been talking to yourself and somebody comes in the room and you have to make believe you are singing? <laughs> and you hope to God the other person really believes there's a song called What Does She Think I Am? Some Kind of Putz? <laughs> Little experiences we've all had. You ever been sitting in a railroad train in a station and there's another train sitting right next to you and one of them starts to move and you can't tell which one it is? <laughs> How about when you're out on a small boat on a windy day? You ever been out rocking back and forth for three or four hours trying to keep your balance? Rough seas, little boat. Then you get back into the shore and you're standing on the dock and you can swear there was something inside of you that was still out there rocking. <laughs> Did you ever try to pick up a suitcase you thought was full, but it wasn't? <laughs> and you go, Doo? And for just a split second, you feel really strong. <laughs> How about when you're looking through a chain link fence? Do you ever notice if you're just the right distance from a chain link fence, sometimes it seems to go <laughs> What is that? How do they do that? Do you ever try to tell somebody they have a little bit of dirt on their face? You can never get them to rub the right spot, can you? Say, you got a little bit of dirt right here. They always go, we're here. <laughs> and you just want to slap the bastard. <laughs> Do you ever notice how awful your face looks in a mirror in a restroom that has fluorescent lights? <laughs> Every cut, scrape, scratch, scar, scare, bruise, boil, bump, pimple, zit, wart, welt, and abscess you've had since birth. All seem to come back at the same time. And all you can think of is, I gotta get the fuck out of here! Did you ever notice sometimes when you're walking with your arm around your date, one of you has to change the way you're walking? Men and women don't walk the same. One of them has to change. Either the man has to walk like this, Or the woman has to walk like this. <laughs> Joey, how are you? <laughs> how about when you're going up a flight of stairs and you think there's one more step? <laughs> and you go... <laughs> and then you have to kind of keep doing that, you know? So people will think it's something you do all the time. I do this all the time. It's the third stage of syphilis. <laughs> Same thing happens when you're going down the stairs. Yep. You could swear there was one more step. <laughs> Holy shit. My hips are in my chest. When you drink grapefruit juice in the morning, do you go like this? <laughs> I do too. Why do we drink it? It's like ice cream throat. You know when you've been eating ice cream too fast and you get that frozen spot in the back of your throat, but you can't do anything about it because you can't reach it to rub it? You just have to kind of wait for it to go away. And it does. Then what do you do? Eat more ice cream. What are we, fucking stupid? <laughs> Did you ever fall asleep on a late afternoon and wake up after dark and you don't know what goddamn day it is? Yep. Yep. Like when you have your head on the pillow. Did you ever notice when you have your head on the pillow, if you close the, if you close the bottom eye, the pillow is down there. <laughs> Then if you switch eyes, the pillow moves up there. Whoa, holy shit, Dave, look at this. The mystery of the moving pillow. I think it's related to the chain link fence mystery myself. Mm -hmm. Do you ever have to sneeze while you're taking a piss? It's frightening, isn't it? It's frightening because actually you can't do it. 
it's physically impossible to sneeze while pissing. Your brain won't let it happen. Your brain says, stop pissing! We're going to sneeze now! Because your brain knows you might blow your asshole out. <clears throat> okay, this guy. He's pretty funny. He put a lot of thought into that, didn't he? Um, one thing that he mentioned that reminded me of something that has happened to me when he was talking about, did you ever take a nap in the afternoon and wake up and it's, it's dark and you don't know what day it is? Well, yes, that has definitely happened. One time, I, it, it just reminded me of something. One time when I was in college and I had, I was very much sleep deprived, let me tell you. And I took a nap in the early evening. It might've been a little dark outside. I can't remember, but I took a nap and I woke up and it was still evening because I had to wake up and do more studying. And I thought it was early morning the next day. So I stumble into the kitchen. So I was living with my grandma at the time. I stumble into the kitchen and turn on the coffee maker to get ready for, to have my morning cup of coffee. And then I realized, no, it's, it's like, it's not even the next day. It's the same day. Oh, well, I'll drink the coffee. I need to wake up anyway. So yeah, that's funny. This guy, <clears throat> he was something else. He was just very, his, his, his body comedy is really funny too. The way he acts things out and just his face, just the look, the looks on his face. He looks so, um, I don't know if the word that I'm wanting to say is right. So I'm not even going to try it because I'll sound ridiculous. Uh, but just his, his face is, has so much expression to it. And he looks like this little, I don't know. It, it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe, but a, the facial expressions on a stand up comic, they add to their material. I think in addition to the, the body language that, you know, that, that they do like the acting out when he was doing these different demonstrations that also adds to the routine. Uh, but the looks that they make as well. And this guy, he, it's such a shame. He's gone. I, I can't remember what it was that took him, if it was cancer or if it was a heart attack or something, but I remember hearing that he died and I was, you know, I was sad about that because, I felt like he had a lot to offer um, to society with regard to the material that he put out there. It was very hard hitting, like I said, and, and very much like Bill Burr, which is why I like Bill so much. And um, I like it that a comedian is able to get up and <clears throat> talk about, uh, like I've said, serious stuff and yet make it, make it funny. And I like that, that we are able to laugh at stuff like that. And I hope that um, uh, our society, he touched on this about how we're always like in disagreement with each other. I hope that our society will kind of, uh, we're kind of like this way with the pendulum, it feels like. And I hope that our society will sort of get back to the point where we can just laugh more easily at things instead of being so offended at stuff. You know, I think it's good. It's good to laugh. And um, as I've said before, pretty sure, and I've really enjoyed that I've been able to laugh at a lot of these really funny people. So, okay, well, that's it for this one. Don't have anything else, so I'm going to wrap it up. Later,